Hey, Passion Igniters, Satyan here. Suzanne here. And we've been having lots of fun making these uh, responses to questions that we asked in uh, video 165. We said, hey, please send in your questions, your uh, what's really on your heart, what you'd like, any support from us. And we've been giving these series of uh, answers. And our answers, obviously, for whoever asked, but it's for everyone because everyone can get some guidance and support from our experience. We're enjoying it for us, too. It's fabulous. So this question is from, um, we want to keep it anonymous due to the nature of the question, because it is highly charged. Mm. And uh, so we're going to respect that. I'm not going to read word for word, but I'm going to give you the essence of the question. How do you fully deal and heal from infidelity in your relationship and move on? My partner really wants to forget and move on because he's really sorry, and I do too, but I'm afraid that he hasn't dealt with the underlying issues that caused it, such as a childhood abandonment by his father, overly demanding an emotional mother, and being perpetually uh, pleasing and a good guy to everyone. He says it's got nothing to do with me, that I'm a wonderful and loving and attractive woman, and how lucky he is to have me in his life. So why? So we've experienced this. We have. Both sides. We've both experienced this. We've been together 26 years. And yes, this is a very loaded and in-depth question. So this may take a little bit longer. Please be patient with us. The nature of this is not something that we can jam in into a couple of two, three minutes, all right? So we'll just speak from our heart because this, this means a lot to us and hopefully it'll serve you. First of all, one of the things I want to get across, I want to share from my heart, is sometimes there are things, many times there are things wrong in a relationship that aren't working, that draws one's attention to other people. Within male and female, masculine and feminine dynamics, we're also mammalian. We have a desire. The male body wants to procreate, same as the female body wants to procreate, not just with one person, the idea of till death do you part, the marriage idea, till death do you part, was created when marriage was meant to be. Maybe you died at 35, 45 maximum. Those were the lifespans back then when those ideologies and those altruisms of till death do you part came in where you were loyal. And those very powerful reasons. And then they weren't based on love. They were based on socioeconomic reasons, families coming together to strengthen the, the survival capacity of both families to ensure a greater financial and, and stable life. So much of much of our ideals and implants and conditionings come from that era. Are you making a case for infidelity? I'm making a case for our mammalian nature. <laughs> okay. My mammalian nature, your mammalian nature, your mammalian nature. If you look in nature, most animals, not, not all, but most animals, there are exceptions, most animals have sex with multiple people. So we have that in our body. Now the challenge is, and why all these religious institutions, in my opinion, and philosophical traditions, clamped on that and said, hey, we need to stop that and keep it this. It's too much chaos to just fuck everyone, to have sex with that. It's chaotic. Nothing, families would break apart, life would break apart, society would break apart, is the danger, especially back then. Things may be changing, but I just want you to get an overall thing. Now, when it comes down to one-on-one, -on -one, you can love your partner deeply and be very attracted to multiple people. Here's the key. You have to distinguish love connection, which is your oneness with one another, from sexual polarity, which is the arc of attraction, the sexual arc of attraction, which you can have with a pornographic person image on a, on a video online. You don't have to have love, but you can have that sexual attraction. The confusion is, and then the, by the way, there's also romantic infatuation, which is your unresolved family dynamics at being attracted to your partner's unresolved or someone else's unresolved family dynamics. They feel like, oh, I've known them forever. You have. It's your family that's showing up as an unresolved thing going on in them that you're attracted to. You don't even know it, but your aura, your energy is drawing you together. So you've got romantic infatuation, screwing, messing around with your mind, your body, your hormones, 
your, your consciousness, your stability, your centeredness. You've got love, which is that oneness feeling. You could have oneness with a dog, oneness with an art picture, oneness with the ocean, oneness with the mountain, oneness with a spiritual figure. It means like there's no separation between how you feel and that, that object, that person, that place. It's just, it's just your, it's just, wow. And then there's the arc of sexual attraction, which is very simple. How does that create it? When someone, if for example, I'm more masculine, if someone is walking by at a beach who's really exuding their feminine sexual energy, then it's hard not to look and to, and, and to notice that and to be attracted to that, vice versa. So these are the three energies, sexual attraction, love, and romantic infatuation. You gotta separate them. In our live events, we actually go through experiences where you learn to distinguish through your body what the differences are so you're not getting confused by them. 95% of us are all confused by all of confused, that. Confused, mix match. A one solution, it's a long-term solution, is get to one of our live events and learn to feel in your body viscerally what the difference is so you're not getting confused by these squashed energies. You're able to go, no, so what I've done now is I love my woman. I love her and my sexual polarity is with her. I don't share my sexual polarity by gawking at other women. When I have, I've gotten in trouble and it hasn't worked out over here. Yeah, you know, it's um, when you suppress what's naturally arising within you. Like Satyan said, you know, if, if I mean, for me, if I see a, a man, if I'm on a beach and there's a guy who's like, you know, really built the, those abs and, you know, being very present, extremely present attracts me. And if, if he's really present and he, he's really in his body showing that presence, like he's really aware of what's going on, like he's, you know, very strong that way, that's, that isn't something that's very attractive. And for me to say, oh, well, you know, I'm not gonna look there or I'm not going to allow myself to feel that, then what happens is I stuff down that feeling and it shows up in weird ways. And, you know, like if he, if some guy walks by and then I, you know, might want to go there. Instead, what I do is I share my attraction with my partner. And, okay, so first part is I share it with him. The second part is he receives that as just an arising something that's coming up that's a natural biological arising that happens and Basically, doesn't like, make you're me alive wrong. woman that's yeah you're alive you're I alive i love the way you do that i love the way you do that yeah, he's a handsome guy i love the way he he's does a handsome that guys and when he says that i'm just i'm, I'm never gonna have everything that to guy's him. gonna have i'm never gonna have everything that every other guy has every guy every woman has a unique beauty, a unique sexiness, a unique gorgeousness. Every single one of us, you, every single one of us is unique. How can you say that one diamond or one flower is the only flower? And then when I'm feeling an attraction, what I do is I, uh, I allow this, rather than suppress it, going to good guy, I feel the beauty of that person fully. And inside I make a reverential bow. I actually visualize doing like a bow, like a martial arts type bow. I thank you for your beauty. Wow, thanks for inspiring me. Because there's that tickle, there's that beauty. You feel this rush of aliveness. It's hormones firing off. It's the arc of sexual attraction. It's mammalian energies going off. It's, it, it's a lot of good things going on. If you suppress it, you mix good with bad, with bad guy and you shut it down. It gets really weird and then you seek that energy out in devious, unconscious or conscious ways. So it's feeling it fully, let that ripple of sexual excitement, ripple of that tantalization go through you fully, feel every cell, but don't gawk, don't make eye contact, just hold it inside, feel reverence. Combine that with reverence, sexual energy with reverence. You gotta find that reverence. Bow to the one you're attracted to inside, say thank you, and then from that elicitation of energy, bring it back to your lover. Bring that arousal back to her or to him. That's so beautiful, Satyan. Yes, bow in reverence. 
to that attraction that you have inside of you and have it be like be be reverent about it be just know that it's something blessed that's just passed by and it's awakened you to, to, to you can go deeper and you can say thank you thank you to this beautiful experience of life that's just passed me and bring it back to my lover or you can push it away and try and 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 pretend like it's not there and then it shows up in weird ways so i think we shared it yeah quite so a bit that that's here. how to deal with it now the healing part we went through a long journey on that we'll make another video on how we healed but i want to give you the shortcut the fast cut the deepest way another one of our warrior sage uh, group of companies is harmony integration academy and we have these coaches that are beautifully, deeply trained in helping you heal infidelity quickly. We recommend that you do a sequence of five, uh, a five week journey on healing infidelity. And if you want to do that and have that experience for yourself, your husband, you're going to experience miracles right after your first session. It's one on one. It's not something we can transmit through over here, but from my heart to your heart, if you've dealt with this, you've got resentment in there. You've got hurt, pain, anger, but any side, you've been on both sides. You're having trouble getting past that hurt. You're having trouble getting past that guilt to each other. This is about, you know, having you let go and, and, and relieve yourself of that and so that you can come together once again. So those of you, if you have any of that going on and you'd like to have a, we can, we'll have one of our coaches give you a complimentary 30 minute discovery session so you can find out what it is, how much it is, what the whole experience would be, what you would be going through in this five week journey of healing, the pain, the suffering that happens with infidelity. It's profound and it's our, it's magical. So if you have, if that's you, email us at info at warriorsage.com info at warriorsage.com and we'll set up for you one of our teammates will set up a complimentary 30 minute discovery strategy session so you can find out about how to do all of that i want to spend much more time let the coach speak to you about that but do step forward and make that happen in your life it's worth it it's worth the investment and it saves you years of heartache and perhaps tens of thousands of dollars in therapy or divorce ignite passion now because everything else can wait. Stay tight.